Good evening, my lettering friends. Thank you if you're joining me on the replay and you have any questions about this broadcast, you can send me a message on the blog, creatively.com. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all at creatively. Good evening. <laughs> I hope you have all had a great weekend. I've missed chatting with you. And please excuse my harried look. It's It's been a long Monday. Hi. Hello, everybody, and thanks for coming in. Those of you that may be joining me for the first time, my name is Lisa. I blog at creatively.com. And this month, the challenge I've issued is to take 31 days to love your lettering. Hi, Paula. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Amber. Thank you. These are one of my favorite pairs. <laughs> Welcome. Paper Flora. Is Flora your middle name? Oh, I mean your first name. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Lots of cookies and more to come. So glad. <laughs> oh, great. Yes, we've got some bakers that watch along with us, which is awesome. Um, hello, Debbie. Hi, Raina. Hey, there you are. I've been chatting with you through messages. So hopefully I'll get to lots of the questions that came from today's lesson. I know that we're now switching pens. We've gone from a regular uh, black pen or ballpoint pen, whichever one you are most comfortably, comfortable. Oh, you're Natalie. Very nice to meet you, Natalie. Hi, Fran. Hello, South Carolina. Um, I'm heading to North Carolina this weekend. So, okay, let's get started. So today's lesson was doing basic letter forms using a calligraphy pen. I know that probably everyone has at least tried a calligraphy pen in the past, and if you have not liked your lettering with, as a result of the calligraphy pen, my biggest guess is that you did not catch the right angle when you were working. Um, so we're going to do some demonstrations tonight because I think that these techniques are much easier to see demonstrated than they are to see through photos. No matter how many pictures I take, it's still not the same of seeing the letters created by hand. Um, so I will pop you guys into the tripod and we'll get started um, like we've done. And if, you're, if you've not been with us for previous videos, they are all available on Catch, catch.me slash creatively. Um, and if you've gone through the previous posts of the challenge, I have been embedding the the periscopes that coordinate with each topic, I embed those after the broadcast is done or in the next day or so, once I get to it. Hi, Mila, welcome. Um, so I'm gonna get the, get the tripod situated. And also for those of you that may not have a calligraphy pen, I'm also going to show you how to tape two pencils together to practice these techniques. All right. So, um, those of you that have been with me since the beginning of October, this is actually a cleaned off desk, believe it or not. <laughs> so, once I get you guys in the tripod, sometimes it's hard for me to keep up with. Um, so, here's my notebook, and this is the one that's been photographed for the samples. Um, and we'll talk about the different strokes. The downstroke, this was using the pen as a slanted pen, and then we talk about the straight also. Um, so I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm glad you're here too, Elisa, or Elisa. Okay, let's get you guys angled correctly so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. I still have not tried out my new tripod um, because I've gotten used to this little desktop one. So hopefully we just we'll make it work, right? All right, so I've just got graph paper in front of me because um, it's easier for me to flip through these with you guys. All right, so before I get started with the calligraphy pen, I'm going to show you... Um, no, this is not my new one. I have not tried it. I'm going to try it during the day, maybe tomorrow, because I, I have some paintings to do. So maybe I'll, I'll test out the new one with that. Okay. So, if you do not have a calligraphy pen and you want to practice this technique, here is an easy way to get started with what you already have in the house. These are just two number two pencils that have been sharpened, and I've got my handy dandy washi tape. <laughs> so, 
what I'm going to do is just hold the two pencils together and tape them. So the idea is to get both points together and then just wrap, wrap, wrap. Sorry. Hard to do it on video. There we go. And I'm going to do another set of wraps. Oh, thank you. This is um, not a new technique. This is actually how I learned um, back in high school. We practice with pencils and we'll do the same thing um, when we do brush lettering next week. I'm going to show you how to practice in pencils first. Okay, so in the blog post I talked about getting the right angle and so you can use the calligraphy pens either as a, a straight nib or a slanted nib. So I'm gonna, oops, sorry, that's not a straight line at all. All right, so let's, I thought I was prepared. I do not have my little ruler with me. So those of you that got the Tumbo brush pens, you got these handy dandy little lettering guides in your, in your pen packet. And I love this, it stays in my traveler's notebook. So I'm just going to draw out a line just to help you visualize the angle. So, and of course I've gotten, I've gotten messy already. <laughs> All right. So we've got, I've drawn in approximately a 45 or 30 to 45 degree angle when you're using the pen as a slanted tip. And then of course this is room for just holding it straight. Um, to show you guys tonight, I will use the Zig calligraphy marker because it's got a nice broad nib. This is a four point millimeter. Oh, traveler's notebook. Yeah, that's a whole nother scope. This is my, my planner is a traveler's notebook. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there's a long catch on this. I think it was like an hour, hour and a half long. It was crazy long. Um, I'll be showing more of my traveler's notebook in the next couple days as I pack for the conference. I'm going to the two to one conference in the Outer Banks this week. Okay. So I have the, the Zig calligraphy marker and I'll use the broad side, which is five millimeters. Um, unless I notice that it's too big. Do you think we would see better if it was vertical? Hard to tell. I did it vertical last week, and I thought that most of the ladies thought that the um, horizontal was better. If we start to notice that there's not enough room this way, then I'll flip it back. If you guys will bear with me and let me know what you think. Okay. So now keep in mind, I am a lefty, so I will show you how I hold the pen, and then I will put it in my right hand because I know there are some of you out here that are right-handed. And um, no, we get a better view of the paper this way. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see if it doesn't if it's not working out this way, we'll flip it the other way. And I really appreciate you guys um, giving feedback on that because I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Um, it's hard to just get the the camera in a way that makes sense. Okay, so I am a lefty. I'm going to start this way because, of course, this is what comes naturally to me. It is a very different position to hold it um, from the left hand to the right hand. So I'll show you both. My right hand is not as neat as my left hand, um, but I do know the proper position, so I can show you proper position. So the reason why I prefer the marker is as a lefty, um, we push the pen instead of pull the pen. And when you work with a dip nib, that's impossible. You will not get ink to flow if you push the nib. Um, so the marker gives a lot more freedom and forgiveness, especially when learning these techniques. Um, in order to use a dip calligraphy nib, I would have to hold the paper um, at a completely different orientation, which I, I know how to do. And those of you that want to learn that, maybe that can be another little mini series later on. But for now, we're just talking about experimenting with creative lettering after um, getting to know our, our own handwriting better and just refining that. So to hold the pen at an angle, you want this flat nib to fall at the angle. And when you're writing with it as a slanted pen, you're going to just move your hand and your arm. You're not gonna allow the pen 
to twist in your hand. Um, to start with, I would say either three millimeter, two millimeter, two, um, 2.5. Those are a little bit better because then you can work kind of small. Um, I, I did mention at the beginning of today's blog post how to figure out the size um, that you're working at and the size that you work at is all dependent on the, the size of the nib. Um, Sorry, we're going to kind of skip around. And so what I meant by that is you're going to determine the size by the nib height. Um, what you would do is you make this little pattern, and this is not the neatest, um, but this little checkerboard actually determines the size that you'll work at. Um, five nibs high is common for the X height, which would be your lowercase letters and about seven to seven and a half would be your cap height, your capital letters. Um, and now if you had an A sender or a D sender, they would be the same length as your X height. So let's see, if I had a G, let's see, one, two, three, four, five is almost four high. Um, so now we didn't do letters today, we were just doing strokes, but I just wanted to show you what I mean by um, these different heights. So like a G, you would make the D sender the same length as your X height. And like the same thing if you were doing a K, your A sender would be the same height as your your um, your X, your X height, which kind of hits the waist. That would be like what we talked about: the waistline, the baseline, and the cap height. Okay, so but we did not do letters today because before you get to letters, you have to learn the basic strokes. Um, so again, this was slanted, and all you're doing is practicing keeping the pen still. So I'm not going to twist my fingers. I'm going to move my hand and arm. This pen, I honestly have had it for a while, um, so I may have gotten it at Michael's. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know that Michael's carries these, which are from Speedball. Um, I just like the double point because, oh, Target, there you go. That's probably exactly where I got it. Um, okay, so. The slanted nib, you want that same angle at the top of the line and the bottom of the line. So you're not gonna you're not gonna curve this around. That would be wrong. <laughs> you're just gonna keep the pen in the same position and go down. If you were right-handed, it will be a little bit easier because you're actually pulling the pen down. Oh, and I've lost focus. There we go. I think I drive the camera a little crazy when my hand moves. Okay, so I'm going to show you the angle again. So the pen actually stays in the same position. It does not move in your fingers. It's your hand and your arm that do the movement. So you can see the angle is there on both sides. So that's the slanted. So I'll show you lefty one more time. I work from above. Um, it's what's most comfortable for me, and so you see that oh, <laughs> a little bit of a goof there. So it's just keeping that same angle. So you're remembering to not twist the pen in your hand, but move your arm or your hand. So do you want to see the the slanted strokes before we talk about straight nib? And put up some hearts if you want to see the strokes with it. Okay, so the first thing we practiced, there you go, <laughs> thanks guys, um, was the straight down stroke. So this is, you know, going to be your stem for a lot of letters. Is this about the angle of the pen to the surface? Um, not exactly, because it, you may find a different, like, because a, a righty will hold it down, it's about getting the position of that flat nib that angle. So if you've got, you know, your up and across, your X and Y axis, um, 
the pen is going to go like kind of right in the middle there, you know, be, like 40, I say 45 to 30 degree angle is what's going to give you the best look. Um, sometimes it's harder to see that with the big, the broad nib. Um, yes. And once you catch that angle, you want to make sure not to rotate out of that angle. You want to keep a consistent angle through the entire letter. So you're going to change your arm or your hand position, not the pen. Um, no, kind of like everything else, you don't want to have too much pressure. The only time we're going to talk about varying your pressure is when we do brush lettering. Then it's going to be very important to change the pressure. Um, but for these types, you really just want to get a comfortable position. Yeah, the no, the brush, you are going to change pressure. Um, but we're not going to get that to that until next week. Um, so, again, just going... For the brush, you do change hand position, too, a little bit. Lefty, and hold your hand like right-handed so you pull. So you hook. Okay. Your zig pens have a slanted nib. All right, none of mine do. Let's see, I may have, okay. So this is not a calligraphy pen, but it is a chiseled tip. Um, the only thing that that would change would be my hand position because I'm going to be able to get that 45 degree angle with the pen right here. So this is kind of light, so I don't know that you'll be able to see that well. The Recollections one, I was just at Michael's today and I was looking to see what kind of calligraphy pens that they had so I could get them to sample for you guys. Um, but I didn't see calligraphy pens except for the speedball ones and the, um, the ink and metal ones. So yeah, so if I'm using a chisel tip, I'm holding, let's see, my hand position is here. If I'm using just a flat nib, then my hand is actually back a little bit. I don't know, was that difference obvious? Is the felt better or the nylon? I don't know. I've been experimenting. I have the nylon tips. The Sakura pens have a nylon nib. Um, but I will tell you that they are less forgiving than the felt. So these are the other ones that I know Michael's had, the three pack of the calligrapher, and my daughter left one uncapped, so my extra fine one is out of commission already. So let's see, here's the three. Okay. So what I'm finding with the nylon one, and I did use this um, on the sample pages, is that it's not responding as much to my pressure, which is kind of good as far as the longevity of the pen, but I did notice that I wasn't getting good coverage for every stroke down. Because um, I don't know that it's, yeah, see that? Like, I don't have that problem when I use the felt pen. Um, I find that I'm having to put a lot more pressure on the nylon than the felt. It does skip, um, and I don't know if I'll be able to get it to focus, but I find that it's not perfectly straight, um, and it could just be this pen, or it could just be me, um, but I do find that I have to work harder to make sure that um, it consistently touches the paper, where the felt is a little more giving. Mm. So that was the downstroke. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I'm continuing to play because there's sometimes where I look for a rough, a rougher look, and I kind of like that. All of your elegant writers skip. Oh man. Okay, so here's I've got an elegant writer here, and I think that's gotten dark. Let's see, let's see if we can get it to lighten up again. I've got an ot light on the workspace, but it's still a little finicky sometimes. Okay, so this is the Elegant Writer. This is considered their broad, and it's a 3.0 millimeter. Um, so, let's see. I don't want to improperly use the pens and write on the edge. Okay, so this was the downstroke. So the downstroke is going to be very broad. Today's lesson really stumped you, Heather. Okay, 
yeah, I definitely find that I'm using a lot more pressure with the nylon nib, but it could just be that it's just an unfamiliar pen to me, um, which is could very well be the case. So another stroke that we practice was, and I'm going to open my notebook so that I can, don't lead you astray. <laughs> So if you notice, we repeated a lot of the same shapes and movements that we had um, in the handwriting lettering forms. Okay, so we went from just a downstroke to a downstroke that started with a header. So the same pen angle, but you're kind of going up first and then down. And I'm skipping. So this is the elegant writer. Watch, it's going to probably skip for me. Um, see, the felt tips are not quite as fine of of the angle your pens are old and still working yeah I did I have um this is one of those things that it does take a lot of practice to get the consistency down um, because it is such a different motion than allowing the pen to kind of move around in your hand so this takes a bit of discipline to keep that pen in the same position and to learn how to just move your hand and or your arm. So we've got that and then we brought it a bit on the diagonal using a header down and then back up. Um, so the pen is staying in the same position but my hand and my arm is moving with it. And then of course you'll also you'll get a little more curvy the more you do that. Never used a pen like this before. Yeah, this is this is definitely different, but I thought that this was a better next step instead of the brush. Um, you got the the pigment. They do seem to take a little bit more pressure because of the nylon tips. Um, okay, so if you're using the pencil, you can do the same thing. You're gonna just keep it at an angle. So you want to work the two of them together, and so it, you won't notice it as much on the forms as you will when you work on a letter, it's going to give you the same kind of shaping as a calligraphy pen. So that's why this can be used to practice. You're using a fountain pen. Okay, yeah, there's, it's slightly, it's different techniques, but the brush pen is definitely one of my favorites as a lefty. Um, so, yeah, so the pencil is good, especially if you wanted to work really big. Um, you could always stick something else in between here as a spacer, and you can make that nib size as much as you want, and then add paint or whatever. Um, but I just, I did want you guys to see that you could, if you didn't have the special pens, or if it's really getting on your nerves, just tape two pencils together and work that way, because you can still practice the strokes and get the same the same effect because it's just about learning to maintain that angle so yeah okay, so like here's the the curve so or the the curve that starts broad at the top and goes down will I write a word with the pencils sure Sometimes I can't talk and write at the same time. <laughs> Someone was asking me about double letters today on Facebook. And the way I add interest to them is I will stagger the ascenders or stagger the, the baseline. Because um, I find that that just adds a little more visual interest. So the O... Oh. Using a calligraphy pen, but you think your nib is too small to see. That is quite possible. Um, I think the one point, the one millimeter ones 
are a little small and you might not notice the difference on those. Um, see, I'm, I've got one pencil is down a little bit further than the other. Um, so there, that's using a pencil, using two pencils as a calligraphy marker. So, of course, my, all right, this one, okay, that's a two millimeter too. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Um, I, I started learning calligraphy in middle school and then took formal calligraphy in high school and have practiced ever since. Um, so some of it is coming a little easier to me because of the amount of time. Yeah, the 1.0 is very fine. Um, and I did not even bring a 1.0 to my desk because I thought, one second. So this is the Elegant Writer 1.3. I'll get to that as soon as I do this. So here it is with, and okay, one of my children has gotten to this one. That's no longer a straight nib. <laughs> it's pretty much a felt tip marker. All right, moving on. Let's see, okay, we've got another 2.5 here. Oh, that's awesome. I like to see kids practice too. Okay. And so later in the week we'll talk about adding flourishes. I know some of you have already experimented with flourishes with the different lettering. Um, but we're going to get to that. We'll get to that at the end of the week before I leave you guys to practice. Um, so there's some words, but of course we weren't doing words today. We're just doing um, the different strokes. And so each of them has a place because it's those strokes that are going to make up the letters, just like when we did the handwriting strokes. Yeah, I know everybody's looking forward to flourishes, but you've got to get the basics down to understand how flourishes work. And that's why we need to get... Um, does the stroke direction affect the look of the calligraphy? Yes. Um, getting those angles right is going to be key to getting calligraphy that you like looking at. Um, because if you're at the wrong angle, you're going to lose that thick and thin. Similar to when we did the faux calligraphy last week, it's really important to get the contrast of the thick and thin. Um, yeah, sweet swirls. It's pretty... It's each lesson is usually pretty short. Of course, the ones where I introduce a new technique usually take a little bit longer to get the hang of, but that's why they're just repetitive movements to, to get those basics down. And so let's do a couple other strokes. So this was down with an end. So, and none of them are for nothing. Every stroke has, has a purpose. Um, it might be a different letter that we're working on. Hi, Kimmy, and welcome. So just practicing these fragments will help you later on in the week as you do different um, exercises. The upstroke is going to be a thin diagonal because the pen angle is not going to change. You're going to change the position or the movement of your hand. Um, See, and let's do some curves. Does the size of the pen go up in number? Yes, a 3.0 is bigger than a 2.0. So these are the top curves. So if you think of your up strokes are going to be thinner, your down strokes are going to be broader. So inverse that, and you're going to get this look. how I'm holding the angle. Hmm. Let's see. So I hold, let's see if I go this way, is it easier to see that? Um, it's coming out so dark, it's funny because, like I said, I've got an ot light right on it. Um, okay, 
So I, and my little one is still awake, goodness, um, of the pen for a right-handed. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So if you were right-handed, I like the color of your hearts too. If you are right-handed, you're going to be um, going this way. Is that on camera? It's not focusing. <laughs> so it takes a lot more concentration for me to do this right-handed. Um, does that does that help at all for the right-handed out there? So your upstrokes are going to be like that. So. Um, let's see. Is that angle better? Let's see. A live lesson. I know. Stephanie, I'm going to get some of the girls that are attending the two to one conference with me to write with me so that I can show you guys, especially you right handed that need to see it done by a right handed person. Okay. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Are you able to see that? It is very hard to describe this in a blog post. I mean, I can take a bunch of pictures, but then it will take me forever and a day to edit the photos because it's annoying. <laughs> it's much easier to show in video, but even better to show live. So anybody who's in Maryland that wants to come for a lettering workshop will have to do that. So let's see, we'll do some more strokes. Thank you, I'm trying. <laughs> So this would be the down curve. I love Periscope too. Periscope has been wonderful for me. It has connected me to so many of you. Okay. So apparently I need to practice with my right handed more. <laughs> I should come to Alabama. Oh, that would be awesome. Maybe someday. All right. So how's that? Does that help for showing you both the left handed and the right handed? the slanted nib. Um, was there any other stroke that you needed to see? I think I got all of them. So, this was the, the header, the diagonal, and the footer. Fountain pens and dip pen questions when we have time. Excellent. If you send them, send me questions in um, on Facebook or Twitter or even on Instagram and if if I if it makes sense for me to incorporate it in this series I'll try to I wasn't gonna go into the dip pens just because that's a whole nother expense and stuff and I was trying to keep these things um, these techniques that you could do with with items you might already have in the house or that were very easy to find um, okay, so let's well thank you Amanda um, okay so now you almost have to hold the pen at a 90 degree angle. It's a straight nib. Okay. Yeah. So I'm holding, yeah, I'm holding the pen almost straight up and down most of the time when I'm working um, with the calligraphy nib. It changes a little bit when I work with brush, um, and it's it's still different when I hold a pencil or when I hold a ballpoint. My hand position changes depending on the tool that I'm using. So those were all the slanted, slanted um, tip. You're going to Michael's and sending messages. Okay, do that. I will. I will do my best to answer in a timely manner. Um, so another way to use a calligraphy pen is to use it as a straight pen. And so this one, I'm actually curving my hand a little bit so that I can make sure that the nib is straight to the line. And I just push that way into the paper. Um, and so you're letting the whole thing fall flat. Okay, thank you. It will be, I'll have it up on catch. Um, you want that whole point to touch your baseline. This is not a very narrow nib. Um, sorry for a pen that'll show a little bit better for you guys. And I lost focus again. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, 
My children have been playing with my calligraphy markers. Hmm. Okay. I think this is the one I just put down. Mm. Sorry about this, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Okay. So, more straight strokes. We went um, with a header and down. I'm getting a lot of feathering on this paper, which is probably part of the reason why it's not focusing well, too. Um, okay, and then we're going to go diagonal down. So this is a completely different angle of the pen. So, and diagonals are a little tricky because you're really moving your whole arm. Yes, we spend a lot of time sharpening, too. We need to get a new sharpener. <laughs> this is the um, Pigma Calligrapher by Sig Sig um, sorry, Sakura. So I've been trying to cycle through different pens so that you guys get to see um, the differences between them because I have a tiny pen collection. So then we've got the header and the footer. And this is a really juicy pen, and it's feathering a lot on the paper. Which means this is nylon tip. Okay, so then your up stroke is going to be not as narrow as if the pen was at an angle. Oh, I'm sorry that the connection's not being nice. So let's see, the same stroke. I did not practice this one right-handed. Oh, that does not want to work at all. <laughs> so I guess maybe a right, if you were right-handed, you might want to try going upstroke with your, with your hand tilted forward um, because it looks like it does not want to push, which that gives you a little bit of a feeling <laughs> of what we lefties go through. Um, Another another one that you need to practice is the curve. And again, this time the angle is straight to the lines in the paper. This is not a great example with this pen because it's, it's feeding so much down that it actually does not look like a nice crisp line at all. Let's switch. Sorry, I know I'm cycling through way too many pens tonight. Um, direction too. So it's just a matter of practicing all those different steps because each of them is going to be a portion of a letter. Like, let's see. So we would have an A, B, That's why we want to do all the different strokes. Just discover that you have a set of five Staedtler dual tip calligraphy pens. Who knew? <laughs> I like the Staedtler. Um, I, that was actually the first marker that I learned to do calligraphy with was a Staedtler dual tip. Um, so yes, I do have a fondness for Staedtler. I use their fine tip pens too for my Bible journaling. Um, let's see. So if you had if you had a chisel point, and of course this is green, um, if you had a chisel point, your the angle of your hand may change, but the idea is still to keep the tip of the pen parallel to the line. 40 coupon in the paper? Yes, I went today and used a 50% off coupon on a pen, and then they also gave me 30% off my whole purchase. So I was able to get some t-shirt paint that I needed, 
and a new <laughs> pen for three dollars and change. Mm. So if you have a chisel tip pen, you can still use that. It's just going to change the position of your hand. Yeah. So for you pen snobs like me, this is the one that I got today. It's the Pentel sign pen because I was looking for another fine tip pen. <laughs> That's a nice bullet point. So we were looking for different pens after last week because um, the hand position for using the microns or the millenniums is sometimes a little difficult. So I was looking for what alternatives can be used and this one is definitely probably a good one. Yeah. So because it's a it's a bullet point, it's felt tip. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're still searching for a fine point pen that works, um, the Pentel Sign Pen in the fine point is a good one. Yes, I have the Michaels app also, and I just usually try and pull the coupons up before I get to the checkout line. Okay, is there anything else that you guys would like to see demonstrated tonight? Um, we can make make this the the two minute warning or three minute warning for those of you that may have joined late my name is Lisa I blog at creatively.com and this month on my blog I'm hosting a lettering challenge it's 31 days to love your lettering do I know if the fine tip bleeds through I'll tell you on this paper it does um, this is five star graph paper from Mead so and let's see try it on the test page. My blog is creatively.com. The URL is in my um, my profile. So let me turn to my pen sample page. Oh, thank you. Okay. So let's see. This is the new. This is, and I like to make sure. Some slight bleed at the bottom of the letters so it's really wherever wherever the pen is resting it does um, have a tendency to bleed uh, is that helpful <laughs> I know Michelle I'm constantly on the lookout for pens that are not going to bleed through my Bible pages and also for my planner pages but I tend to use ballpoint ink on my planner pages um, I don't usually use the, the juicy inks Okay, any other questions for tonight before I sign off? I do try and keep these scopes at a somewhat reasonable timeline because I know that your time is valuable and it is kind of late for those on the East Coast. Yes, Joann's, um, Joann's and Michael's and all those coupons usually work at each other's stores. Hobby Lobby, I think, is a little more proprietary about their coupons. Oop, here I am. All right. So if there are no other questions for tonight, hi Kim, thank you. Um, if there are no other questions for tonight, I'm gonna wind this up. Thank you, Michelle, I appreciate your compliments. Um, so that's it, and tomorrow we will get started with letters. So you might wanna do another page of practice shapes to get comfortable with the position of the different angles. Tomorrow we'll be using the, oh, and this is not a good connection, is it? Um, We'll use the calligraphy pen with our print handwriting, and then we'll get to the italics the next day. How do you get past emails? Um, the emails are actually just an excerpt from the daily blog post. So if you go to the index page of the challenge, which is linked to the bottom picture on the blog post, 
you'll have the index of all the posts so far. Those that get them in the email, they just get a little excerpt and then they have to click over to the blog for the, for the rest of the post um, and all the pictures because the pictures don't come in the email. But thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys being here for all the love you guys have been showing both here on Periscope and on Instagram. I love when you guys tag me on your pages. It's really been a blessing to look through the work that you guys are doing. You guys are doing lots of practice. I saw that everybody practiced quotes and different lettering inspiration this weekend. And each weekend we're going to have that same assignment. And hopefully the emails will go out on time, which I'm still working on that. That's not always happening. But I need to get things set up. I am headed out to the 2 to 1 conference this weekend. I travel on Thursday, um, so I'll be gone through Sunday. I'm going to scope during it. I am not certain on the time yet. I will know more as the, my travel time gets a little closer. I know that Friday night scope will not be at 1030 because there is a conference event at the same time. And so we'll try and work that out so I can check in with you guys, especially because Friday, I believe, is when we'll talk flourishes. And I know that you guys are going to want to see that demonstrated more. So we will work on that. I may have to just squeeze in some time on Saturday instead of the normal Friday night. We'll, but we'll hammer that out throughout the week. You guys can be a help for me deciding on what time works the best for the most of us. Um, but until tomorrow, I will see you later, and I'll get tomorrow's blog post up, and hopefully it will come out to you a little bit earlier in the day. I'm working on that. Thank you for your patience and for your encouragement. Thank you for all the shares and the love. I truly appreciate you. You sent me a message through the blog. Excellent. I, I have a good chance of responding to that pretty quickly. Facebook has been a little bit slower because I'm not getting the notifications like I used to. Um, but I'll work that out, and I'll talk to other bloggers this weekend to figure out how to best uh, handle that because um, I definitely want to respond to you guys in a timely manner. But if there's anything that you guys want to see in the periscopes, be sure to send me messages during the day um, because that, <laughs> that's it's a good way for me to get it worked into the nightly broadcast if that is if it's especially if it's related to the day's lesson. Um, but that's it. I'm going to sign off for tonight. I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks. Have a great night.